right, welcome to First Chapter Fridays. I'm Miss Karen, the Children's Librarian from the Oakmont Carnegie Library, and this month we are focusing on some spooky stories. This one is called No Place for Monsters. It's a brand new book that we just cataloged. And here's some information about it. In this spellbinding, lavishly illustrated story that Diary of a Wimpy Kid author Jeff Kinney calls wildly imaginative and totally terrifying, Two unlikely friends face down their worst fears in order to stop their small town and themselves from disappearing. So, let's take a look at the first chapter. And you can see this book is really scarily illustrated. There's illustrations on every page, which makes it really fun to read. And if you come to see me at the Oakmont Carnegie Library, I've got some cool monster bookmarks. I'd love to see you come down and check out some books. All right, here's our first page. Sunset. The sky dims from pink to purple. Feel the chill of the night breeze. Hear the whisper of dry grass, the skitter of leaves down empty sidewalks. The shadows creep closer. Once we feared these shadows, remember? You've heard the stories, stories of monsters, bogies and bogarts and bugbears waiting to spring from the darkness. Ah, uh, but that was long ago, back when the woods were still wild and the shadows untamed. We are safe now. There is no place for monsters in suburbia. And that was the preface, chapter one, Cindy Who. On Monday, Cindy Fogel woke her parents at 2 a.m. with a scream. Mr. and Mrs. Fogel found Cindy sitting bolt upright in her bed, eyes wide and skin clammy. Night terrors, figured Mrs. Fogel. Cindy slept with her parents the rest of the night. There's the next page. On Tuesday, Cindy woke up at 1.45 a.m. She was hysterical when her parents arrived to calm her. She spent another restless night in her parents' room babbling about the really tall man. On Wednesday, Cindy's screams started shortly after midnight. She begged to spend the night in her parents' room. Again, her room was bad. The closet was bad, the curtains were bad, under the bed, bad, bad, bad. Mr. Fogel even checked under the bed. See, no monsters, no really tall man, just a plush rabbit that Mr. Fogel didn't remember buying. At last, her parents relented, and while Cindy struggled between them, sorry, snuggled between them, Mr. Fogel silently vowed that this would be the final time his daughter slept in their bed. Thursday, Mrs. Fogel was roused in the middle of the night by a faint shuffling noise. She held her breath and listened. Silence. Probably just the fridge or water heater or one of the many strange house noises she noticed only at night. She fell back into sleep. In the morning, Mr. and Mrs. Fogel woke and went about their business. They did not notice that Cindy was gone. Her room was empty. The speckled wallpaper, the pony border, the Tinkerbell bed sheets, the toy chest, the clothes, that should not have been that should have been hanging in the closet gone no not gone more like never there to begin with it was just a spare room mr fogel had been planning to fill with a pool table there's our last page for this chapter and the family portrait hanging in the hall Oh, that was there. It showed Mr. and Mrs. Fogel holding hands and smiling. No Cindy between them. Why should there be a Cindy? The Fogels did not have a daughter. And the school didn't call when Cindy failed to show. Why should they? There was no Cindy Fogel in their records. Cindy, Cindy who? So, you can check this out. Hop on to www.oakmontlibrary.org or you can make an appointment to do some browsing and come check out some more scary books. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.